from Manhattan, it's The Cube. Covering AWS Summit New York City 2017. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. And we are live here in the Javits Center, continuing on The Cube our coverage of AWS Summit 2017 uh, here in Midtown. Starting to wind down, at the tail end of the day, but still a lot of excitement out here on the show floor behind us as there has been all day long. Joining us now, along with Stu Miniman, I'm John Walls, is Josh Stella, who is the CEO and co-founder of Fugue, Washington DC and Frederick, Maryland uh, based company. Josh, thanks for being with us. Gentlemen, thanks for having me on theCUBE. You bet, absolutely. First time, I think, right? No, oh, no second I, time. Oh, sorry, second time. Yep. All right, so a CUBE vet. A cube vet. A cube there you vet. Go. All right. All right. So for our folks, uh, uh, viewers at home who might not be too familiar with Fugue, sure. Tell us a little bit about what you do, and I'm always curious about the the origin of the name, where that you know, where it sure came from. Sure thing. Yeah. Sure. So what Fugue is a uh, is an infrastructure automation system for the cloud. So it builds everything you need on the cloud. It constantly monitors and operates it. It corrects it if anything goes wrong, and it gives you a full view of everything in your infrastructure. So we like to say. You go fast, that's why you're going to cloud, is to be able to go fast. You need to be able to see everything and get it right. Fugue gives you all of those capabilities uh, at a different level than anything else out there. Uh, the name actually comes from music, uh, from a form of musical composition called a fugue. And there might be some folks in the audience who remember Hofstetter's book, uh, Gödel Escherbach. That was actually where the idea came from. Uh, that and uh, there aren't many English words left <laughs> <laughs> that are real words, and I didn't want to make something up. So. Well, I know for, for it, 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 you could get the website for it, so it was good to go. <laughs> yeah, we used uh, Fugue.co, that was part of it, sure. <laughs> it worked out for you then. It worked out, well, yeah. Well, for a guy I know uh, who's big into astronomy, I, I guess uh, cloud would be, what, you know, that, that seems to make <laughs> sense, right? That you'd be tied into that. Um, as, just in general, cloud migration now, with, with, with we're seeing this massive, you know, this paradigm shift, right? Yes that's occurring right now. What, what's the, um, in your mind, the biggest driver you know, of that? You know, what, why, are, why are people now seriously on the up? Sure, there? so when I was at AWS, most of the growth that we saw was sort of bottom up. Uh, we would go into a new customer and they'd say, we didn't think we were on cloud, and then we looked and there are 130 cloud accounts on AWS scattered throughout the organization. Uh, that was kind of the first motion of cloud adoption. We're really now in this second wave and this wave is strategic. It's where CIOs, CEOs, and CTOs are saying this is the right way to go. They do security well, uh, it's more cost effective. More than anything, it allows us to move fast, iterate, be disruptive ourselves, mm -hmm. instead of letting the other guys who are moving fast on cloud disrupt us. Mm -hmm. So these are the big drivers. Uh, what Fugue does is it allows your cloud desk and almost any of these organizations that are in this sort of phase two motion, mm -hmm. it's not all bottom up. They're starting to say, how do we really want to get our hands around this? And so what Fugue allows you to do is let your developers go even faster than they could without it, mm -hmm. but where things like policy as code and infrastructure as code are just baked in from the front. So your developers can go really quickly, iterate, and the system will actually tell them when they're doing something that isn't allowed by, for example, a regulatory regime or a compliance requirement. And once you've built those things, Fugue makes sure they're always running properly. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a really powerful technology for migration. J Josh, I wonder if you could take us in that dynamic you just talked about, sure. because the stuff where the developers were just playing with it, uh, we, we definitely saw it. You know, my, my joke when I went to an audience is like there's two types of customers out there, those that know they're using AWS and those that don't realize that they are using AWS. Yeah, exactly. Um, but when you switch to the, 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 the top down, it's how do you get buy-in, how do you get you know, that developer and the operator you know, all, all, all on the same page. Um, and even you say today, most companies say, I have a cloud strategy, but everybody's strategy is different, and there's still kind of the ink's drying, and as uh, you know, most people say, strategy means it's good for today, maybe not two years from now. So, yeah. but, you know, what, what are you seeing in the customer base as some of those organizational dynamics, strategy dynamics? Sure, so what we're seeing are, uh, people are confused, I think, still about where this whole thing's going. There, there's a lot of clarity about where it's been, what it can do for you now, that's coming into a clear focus. But we're in this moment of, uh, not just moment, decade, of huge change in computing. And we're still probably less than halfway through this sea change. So I'd say the strategy, what we advise people, is the strategy has to be really thinking more about the future that is unknown as much as the present that's known. 
and that's a difficult thing to do. So what our approach to that has been, uh, and then how do you unify the, uh, the kind of intentions of the executives and the developers? Well, with developers, you have to give them great tools. You have to give them things they want to use. You can't impose these kind of old enterprise systems on them. They will find ways around it. So with Fugue, we wrote this very elegant functional programming language where the developers have far more power to do infrastructure as code than with anything else. It's a very beautiful, elegant language. Lots of developer tooling around that. We're just coming out within the next couple of weeks here an open beta on a visualization system. So as you're writing your infrastructure as code, you automatically can see a diagram of everything that will be deployed. So developers really like those aspects of Fugue. We speak their language. I'm the CEO, I've been a developer for 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, from the, the other side of the equation though, the, the, the executive level, the leadership of the organization, they need assurance that what's being built is going to be correct, is going to be within the bounds of what's allowed by the organization, and can adapt to change as it comes down the pike. So, and this gets back to strategy. So we had the kind of uh, everything being built with virtual machines and attached disks, and now you know, containers are really a huge trend, a really great trend, but it's not the end. You have things like Lambda, you have things like machine learning as services, and the application boundary is around all of those things, the ones that are there now, and where it's going in the future. And so Fugue is very much architected to grow with that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm curious what you're seeing from customers. Uh, you know, it used to be, uh, I think back to you know, virtualization, it was, you know, IT was a cost center, and yes. how do we squeeze money out? Then it was, how can IT respond to the business? And now, you know, the, the leading edge customers is, how's IT driving business? Uh, and uh, I think about machine learning, you know, IOT, you know, a lot, lot of the customers we've talked to that are using serverless, it's, you know, I, I can be more profitable from day one, I can, you know, react much faster. Um, what, what are the dynamics you're seeing, kind of the role in IT uh, and, you know, the, yes. the business and driving forward? Thanks, that's a great question. So, you know, uh, software is eating the world. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the cloud is software, if you do it right. The, the, the use of the cloud is software. And so uh, we're definitely seeing that, where it used to be IT was this big fixed cost center and you were trying to just get more efficiency out of it, you know, maybe extend your, your recap cycles if you could get away with it, kind of. Uh, now it's really a, a disruptive offensive capability. How am I going to build the next thing that uh, expands my market share, that, uh, that goes after uh, other people who are trying to be disruptive? So you have to be able to go really, really fast uh, in order to do that. Um, yeah. So, one of the announcements today was the AWS Migration Hub, um, and it sounds great. I've got all of these migrations out there, and it's going to help, help them put together. But it reminds me of kind of, we have the manager of managers, because there's so many services out there. You know, public cloud, you know, it used to be like, oh, cloud's going to simplify everything. It's like, no, no cloud is not simplifying anything. Uh, it, it, we always have kind of the complexity. How, how do you help uh, you know, with, with that? How are customers grappling with the speed of change and the complexity sure. uh, that is now the so, environments today? Uh, through automation and code. Yeah. Uh, and that's the whole way through the stack. You know, people used to think about uh, uh, software just being the application. Then in more recent, uh, I'd say in the last 18 months, people have really figured out that actually know the configuration of the system, the infrastructure, if you will, although uh, even that's a bit anachronistic, has to be code, so does security. Everything needs to be turned into code so that the build process is, is minutes, not days or hours. So we have a customer in financial services, for example, uh, that uses Fugue to build their entire CI CD pipeline and then integrate itself with it so that all of their infrastructure and security policies are completely automated whenever a developer does a pull request. So if they do a pull request, out comes an infrastructure. If that infrastructure did not meet policy, it's a build fail. So the, the way you adapt to all this complexity is through automation. And it's going to get worse, not better, as these services proliferate and as the application boundaries are drawn around wider and wider classes of services. Well, yeah, and that's what I, I guess to, to ask about, is that if I come in to the cloud and I, I have X workloads, you know, and that's, and all of a sudden, you know, here comes this and here comes that, now I can do this and I have new capabilities and it's growing and growing and my managing becomes a whole different animal now, right? Yes. How do I control that? How do I keep a handle on that and not get overwhelmed by the ability to do more and then people within my own company wanting to do more? 
Yeah, so, so what you're getting at there, I think, is that uh, people go into this thinking the day one problem is the hard one. Right. It's not. No, mine's going to be when it becomes exponentially larger. Yeah, and, and the day two on problem is the hard one. Right. Now I've built this thing, is it right anymore? Right. Is it doing what it's supposed to do? Who owns it? Right, so all these things are what Fugue were built to address. We don't just build stuff on cloud, we monitor every 30 seconds, and if anything gets out of specification, we fix it. So the effect of this is, as you're building and building and building, if Fugue is happy, your infrastructure is correct. So you no longer have to worry about what's out there, it is operating as intended at the infrastructure layer. So uh, I think that you're exactly right. You get to these large scales and you realize, wow, I have to automate everything. Typically inside of enterprises, they're kind of hand rolling a bunch of point solutions and bags of Python and Bash script to try to do it. It's a really hard problem. Sure. All right, so Josh, it's been a year since you came out of stealth. You know, uh, what's, what's been exciting, uh, what's been challenging, and what, what do you expect to see uh, by the time we catch up with you a year from now? Yeah, sure, so what's been exciting is the amount of uh, real traction and interest we're getting out of like financial services, government, and healthcare, those kinds of markets. Um, I'd say uh, it's also been exciting to get uh, the kind of feedback we have from our, our early customers, which is they, they really become evangelists for us, and that feels great. When you give people a technology that they don't just use, but they love, that, that's very exciting. Uh, a year from now, you're going to see a lot from us over the next six to nine months in terms of product releases. We're going to be putting something out at reInvent, I can't get too much into it, that really changes some of the dynamics around things like being able to adopt cloud. So, uh, a lot of exciting stuff it coming It sounds like you've, you've got a pretty uh, interesting runway ahead of you, and you certainly have your hands full, but I think you've got a pretty good hand on it. So, uh, congratulations on a very good year. Thank and you. And we wish you all the best success down the road as well. Great, thanks for Great. your time. You bet, Josh, thank you. Josh Stella from Fugue joining us here on theCUBE, back with more from the Javits Center. We're in Midtown Manhattan at AWS Summit 2017.